going to talk now about my personal experiences and how they relate to this collective initiation that we're going through. Where in order to find your true self, your individual self-identity, you need to lose yourself. Your self-identity that is embedded with and surrounded by and built upon all of the people that you have relationships with. Your entire identity is a fraction of this group and a fraction of that group. I'm a brother or sister of nine siblings, uh, children to my parents, a parent to my children. All of these self-identity aspects are in relationship to others. So you'll need to be willing and able to relinquish your attachment to all of those people, even your children. See, I was at the point where I was ready to leave this world, take my life by my own hand. And then God picked me up and dusted me off and said, no, 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 there's a better way. Here, let's put you through this thing where you can leave this world with us. And you don't have to take your life by your own hand. And in order for me to get to the place where I am today, I had to go through all of these things. But in the beginning, the initiation process, break me down, you build me up, believer, I'm a believer. Break me down, build me back up and do whatever it takes. That breaking down and building back up is of your self-image. And David Nino Rodriguez has said multiple times that his best sources, which is pretty much this one guy named Juan Savin, Juan O'Savin, keeps saying, America, we need to go through a near-death experience, NDE, a near-death experience. And right at the last minute, the White Hats are going to jump in and snatch a victory from the jaws of defeat. But until then, the White Hats are just standing by and letting all of this stuff take place until we go through this near-death experience. Ego death is what I'm referring to. Ego is your self-image and your worldview. That near-death experience that I've had, and I've referred to it as such a few times, when I found the implant, suddenly all my friends and fam family abandoned me. A few months later, I'm filming Plasma Fire, and then the sequence just fell from uh, one on top of the other from there. Sun Tunnel, Airborne Aircraft Carrier, Black Dot Craft, provably intelligently controlled clouds, etc. I came to a point eventually where I've had so many experiences, I can't relate to regular people anymore. And so it's understandable how these secret society types that have been initiated don't really want to hang around. I'm already to the point where normies, as we call them, I'm not interested in having a conversation with them because the things they want to talk about, I have no interest in discussing. And the things I want to talk about, they have no ability to discuss. It's like I'm on a Super X Moto Supercross doing these super high jumps and flips and tricks and they still got tricycle training wheels on. When it comes to this truther stuff, you have to have been doing it for 20 years. They can't just come out onto the Super X track, even if they wanted to. And I ain't gonna go back onto the little kid track. I have no desire to. So this collective initiation we're going through, uh, that near-death experience is part of it. On an individual level, they call it a collective initiation, but each one of us has to have that experience individually. And this whole process is to extract the individuals from the group, each and every and any group you find yourself a part of. A religion, a country, I'm a citizen of the United States. Clear up to, I'm a member of the family of human beings. The Earth Tribe. Only once you're willing to leave this world, want to leave my old life behind. Not a yes sir, not a follower. You fit the box, fit the mold, have a seat in the corner. Take your number. There's always lightning before the thunder. And that video shows the aliens showing up and seeing a bunch of sheep all around. And this COVID process is what they decided to enact to see who's willing to leave their old life behind. And in order to do that, you gotta leave your old self-identity behind. But you don't even have a self-identity. You have a, an identity as it relates to, I'm the father of two children. That's a, 
that's a three-person relationship. I'm the husband of my wife, that's a two-person relationship. I'm a member of my family, however many members in your family there are. I'm a citizen of the United States. 350 million, you're a fraction. One 350 millionth of a person when it comes to your identity as it relates to being an American. So, in order to truly find yourself, you have to leave your old life behind, leave your old self-identity behind. And that's what happens in an initiation process, whether it's going into the military, boot camp, the fraternity and the sorority, hazing week. This is where they break you down and then build you back up. And once you're rebuilt back up, as in the image of one of us, in order to join our group, our fraternity, our sorority, our military, our street gang, they beat you in or jump you in if you're a guy and sex you in if you're a girl. To get you to leave your old identity behind, they got to break you down and then build you back up. And that's what David Nino Rodriguez is talking about when he says we got to let this thing keep going until we have a near-death experience and lose our ideas of who we thought we were. COVID has done a great job of that. David Nino Rodriguez is one of these uh, Trump till I die, red, white, and blue patriot truthers. Well, eventually we're all going to come to find out we're not the freedom-loving, flag-waving, Bible-thumping, gun-toting, God-fearing Christians we thought we were. Because none of those people in that group are who you thought they were. And they're all getting a chance to show their true colors now, just like I said on my way to Missouri. You're all going to have to go through this too. And everyone's getting a chance to show their true colors. Through the COVID process, family members have turned on each other. You need to go get the vaccine, and if you don't, you can't come over. Like Matt from Quantum of Conscience said, oh, okay, you can, but you got to eat outside. And you got to wear a mask even when you're outside. Uh, James True, in one of his videos a long time ago, I remember him saying something in regards to something to the effect of getting to the point where you realize you can't even trust your own mother. That was James's words. And they resonated with me because my mother was in on the implant, which started my initiation process, started breaking me down. My self-image and my worldview completely disintegrated. I thought I was in a world of people who would give a shit once I show them the truth about plasma fire. Ha! I was wrong. So plasma fire has shown me these people, these human beings that I thought I was a part of their group. I don't belong with them. Quickly, let me give you these three examples of who is they. Three songs by 21 Pilots. Jumpsuit. Music video starts out with him walking up saying... We've been here the whole time. You've been asleep. It's time to wake up. And then it proceeds with the song. We? Who is this we that's been here the whole time? The final lyric in the song Heathens. And now they're outside ready to bust. It looks like you might be one of us. Remember, group identity is what you got to lose your group identity. you got to leave your old life behind to become one of us. That's what an initiation is. And another one by 21 Pilots. Nice to know my kind will be on my side. I don't believe the hype. And you know you're a terrible sight. But you'll be just fine. Just don't believe the hype. So there's three instances where 21 Pilots is saying, we've been here the whole time. You've been asleep. We, as opposed to you, who is this we that's been here the whole time? If he's talking to us who have been asleep. Now they're outside ready to bust. It looks like you might be one of us. One of who? What group? Who? Who? Nice to know my kind will be on my side. Who is he talking about? So, I had to go through a process where I was ready to leave this world taking my life by my own hand because my relationships with everyone else had broken down so far that life didn't seem worth living because my whole self-identity was based on these relationships to other people and through this process I've been shown I'm not one of them 
I belong appropriately. I would feel more comfortable. Just like I said, I'm not interested in talking about the stuff that normies want to talk about. They're not interested in or, or able to talk about the things that I want to talk about. Stuff I want to talk about is earth-shattering, huge subjects. They're not capable or equipped to even engage in those kind of, kind of conversations. you got to spend 20 years being a truther in order to be able to engage with me in stuff that would interest me. And in order to engage in conversation with them, I'd have to lower myself, go back to the training wheels. So, through this long process, I've been extracted from the group. I'm no longer one of them and I know it. I don't belong here and I know it. I would be much more comfortable in a relationship with other beings of a consciousness that is compatible with my own. And whether or not they inhabit a human body doesn't matter. That's the group, the largest group there is that I no longer consider myself one of. And I had to get to the point where I was ready and willing to leave this world in order to be able to be put through the process that I've put, been put through. <clears throat> so I'm still able to leave this world, but not by taking my own life. By leaving my old life behind. Okay, that's the song Thunder, <clears throat> where the aliens show up and see nothing but a bunch of sheep around. So I'm prepared, I'm capable of leaving my old life behind. I'm capable of leaving this whole world and all of the people in it. But it took me an excruciating amount of hardship and the prolonged process that I've been through to break me down in order to build me back up with a new identity, first I had to develop my own self-identity. I had to develop a relationship with myself because that's the only person I had left. Prior to that, your self-image is a fraction of a relationship with these people, half of the relationship between you and your wife, one-third of the relationship between you and your two kids. If you work at a, an employer who has 20 employees, you're one-twentieth of that group. If you're in a religion that has X number of people, you're a fraction of that group. And of humanity, 8 billion, let's say, 7 billion, whatever, you're one seven billionth of that group. And only by relinquishing your attachment to all these groups and breaking down your self-identity and extracting you from those groups to where you no longer identify as one of them, only then can you develop a true individual self-identity. And it requires that near-death experience, the death of the ego. Ego is your self-image and your worldview. And your self-image and your worldview fit perfectly anytime there's a change to the shape of one, there is automatically a corresponding change to the shape of the other. Because your worldview fits perfectly around your self-image. And your self-image fits perfectly inside of your worldview. So if something comes into your world of experience, like a microchip in your head, plasma fire, whatever it is, let's just say the shape of your self-image and worldview were both circles. A circle within a circle. And then something of ex an experience you have changes the shape of your worldview, gives one of those uh, edges a 90 degree angle like a square. So it's a circle except one of the sides corners has a square, 90 degree angle on it. Now your self-image has to readjust and adapt to that new shape of your worldview. Likewise, if there's a change in your self-image, because now that there's something changed in your world, plasma fire and a bunch of people who can't see it, now I have to adapt my self-image to that new worldview I have. How do I now fit into this world? Accordingly, my self-image must change because I live within this world and suddenly the world changed. So I, my self-image within that worldview, also must change. On that note, I'm something like a shaman as my world changed and suddenly there's plasma fire all over and I'm the only one that can see it. Therefore, my self-image adapted and adjusted and has taken quite a while to accommodate. But I feel I've adjusted to my new, I'm really hitting my stride now, if you know what I mean. And accepting the role that I play within this world as the only one who can see something so blatantly obvious right in front of all of us. So, this ego death, oh, 
I made a video a while back. It was a commercial by Apple, the new Apple iPad, where they were exhibiting or showcasing a song by Olivia, Olivia Rodriguez. And the song is called Brutal. I'll put the link in the description. It's only a six minute video. The song is called Brutal and she sings, uh, you say these are the golden years, but I just want to disappear. Ego crush is so severe. God, it's brutal out here. And they're advertising the new masks. iPad masks. We used to call them filters where you can put puppy dog eyes and ears and a tongue. And it puts that filter over your face to where you got those features of a puppy dog. Or whatever other filters that we used to call them. Now they're calling them masks. And in her song, she says, You say these are the golden years, but I just want to disappear. Ego crushes so severe. God, it's brutal out here. And they're advertising the masks. Hold on, I got company. So what they're advertising is these Apple iPad masks, like filters that you can put on. Most of the filters that they show are flames and eyeballs. There is something deeply esoteric about that commercial that's referencing something like the ego death that we're all being put through. The collective initiation that we're all being put through. That's a terminology I've had stashed in my bag for over 20 years. Since I watched Greg Braden, Awakening to Zero Point and Beyond Zero Point, the collective initiation. It's not a term I came up with recently. That collective initiation we're being put through requires an ego death. She didn't say ego death is so severe. She said ego crush is so severe. Same thing. This near-death experience, this death of your self-identity or your ego or your self-image in your worldview, you need to drop the masks of your self-identity, which are all these fractions of these relationships to other people, and recognize those people aren't who you thought they were. Humanity, the largest group that you consider yourself a part of, has shown themselves to be something other than what you thought they were. Americans and their freedom-loving, flag-waving, gun-toting, God-fearing, Bible-thumping Christians have shown themselves to be something other than you thought you were. they were. All those churches closed their doors and told you to go take a vax. Half those Christians joined the group, said, yeah, Romans 13, you need to go take your vax, the government said so. All of these groups that you've been a part of, you're being pried away from because they're all showing their true colors. And in order to establish your self-identity, you need to break away from those groups because that's what your identity is built on. Your relationship or proximity to these people. Right down to, like James said, got to get to the point where you realize I can't even trust my own mother. There are people whose family members would call the cops because you got a fake vaccine passport and I know you ordered it online and you don't really get the sh you didn't really get the shot. So I'm going to turn you in. Those people are not what you thought they were. It's a fake, fraudulent facade that they're living. Oh, we're family. All for one and one for all. Until we hit this bump in the road that reveals your true colors. And their allegiance to the group is far more powerful than their allegiance to you because they don't have a self-identity either. They have abandoned themselves. They have evacuated themselves. And when you tell me you got a microchip in your head, I don't know you anymore. Jeff who? Uh, Julie, it's your son. Oh, I'm not big into genealogy and family trees and stuff. You're going to have to be more specific. Jeff who now? Because their allegiance to the state and the collective is so much stronger than their relationship with me and they are not strong enough within themselves to have their own personal self-identity. Their identity is based on their attachment to and their proximity to and their relationship to these other groups. And in order to maintain good standing status and membership within these other groups, they gotta throw you to the wolves. Yeah, all for one and one for all until it's conveniently self-serving to sacrifice you on the altar of keeping my own comfort and convenience and maintaining my good standing status within the group. And that's why uh, David Icke 
calls it the hassle-free zone. You just exited the hassle-free zone and I'm not going with you, is what they say to anyone who says, hey, I don't think you should take that vaccine. Think for yourself, use your own senses. None of this was right. The authorities say so, and the general, the 51% of my peers say so. Who am I to think for myself? I'm not the author of my own authority. I can't do that. Only if you've been doing it for your whole fucking life. We are in the truther bowl, like the Super Bowl. The ultimate showdown, the ultimate contest to challenge your, your, your skill sets and experiences. And like Greg Braden said, it feels very different. Instead of thinking of it as a pass or fail scenario, like a test, think of it more like an opportunity to demonstrate mastery in these different areas of life, in these areas of character growth and development that you've been working on your whole life. Now it's time to exercise them. People who haven't been exercising their autonomy and thinking for themselves for their whole life can't just suddenly start doing it right now in the middle of the truth or bowl. It's like going out on the Super X motocross track trying to do a triple backflip when they're still on training wheels. It's not just a matter of a choice like you could get them to do it if they would choose to. They've been making choices for their whole life that has led them up to this point right here where they're incapable of thinking for themselves or becoming the author of their own authority establishing their own individual self-identity. Their identity is built upon these relationships to other people. So in this process of the COVID, they are extracting individuals who are capable of being an individual from the group. And you will be pried away from all of those groups. You're, you think you have some sort of allegiance to them and they have an allegiance to you. You'll find out the truth when their true colors are revealed and they're given an opportunity and a reason and a motivation to throw you to the wolves. They'll do so with a quickness, which is what happened to me. And that's why I got to the point where I was ready to just take my own life and leave this world by my own hand. God picked me up and dusted me back off. And all of those feelings that I had been harboring and ruminating about for months and months and months and months and months left me within three seconds. I've told this story quite a few times. That strong of a feeling and all the thoughts that went with it for months and months left in three seconds. When I said, and I was planning my exit from this world. And I said, I guess at least before I go, at least I'll tell them the story. And by that, I meant I can make a less than 10 second video with an X-Acto knife and popping this thing out, it's just beneath the skin. All you'd have to do is lance the skin and it would pop out like a zit. And when I said, well, before I should go, I should tell my story, all I meant was going and showing you. And when I said that, well, I guess before I go, I'll at least tell the story because I wanted to leave the truthers with the truth that I have that no one else has. Everyone talks about this future day when they're gonna microchip everyone. I have the truth. And I was going to leave you guys with that valuable jewel of knowledge before I leave. So I said, I guess I should at least tell my story before I go. And that's all I meant at the time when I said that. And those feelings left me within three seconds. And suddenly it was just like whoosh. And I've even contemplated before, maybe it was those ELF waves. Maybe they were hitting me with extremely low frequencies. And suddenly someone turned off the transmitter. Like a, the weight was on my shoulders and the whole weight of the world just lifted off my shoulders. When I said, maybe, I guess I'll tell my story before I go. And I was, I was thinking about making that video. I still have not made that implant extraction video. Four and a half years down the road. And I have told quite the story. So when I was ready to take my own life. But before I went, I was going to do one last good deed. Deliver some truth to the truthers that I was in possession of. Whoosh, those feelings disappeared. The whole weight of the world lifted off my shoulders. And I didn't know what had just happened, but I, I was like, whoa, what the hell just happened? I feel better. Holy shit, I feel better. I haven't felt this good in a long time. What the hell just happened? It was palpable. I could feel it instantly. I was like, whoa. I've been given a lot of truth since then. 
Airborne aircraft carrier, sun tunnel, black dot craft, intelligently controlled clouds, plasma fire. And I'm still delivering, telling my story, delivering truth. And I still haven't even made that video. I could make it in 10 seconds by myself without anyone else. But I realized, one, it's better off right there. Because if I got it in a little earring box and I pull it out and show someone, uh, you know, personal injury attorneys say I want to file a lawsuit against the American government. They implanted this uh, behind my ear. If I pull it out from anywhere besides behind my ear, they're going to say, I don't care if you say that was behind your ear or not. You just pulled that out of a little jewelry box from in your pocket. And I don't care if there's a little scar behind your ear or not. I ain't believing you for a half second. Why? They're same attachment to the groups. Because if I take this case, the men in black might come fucking knock on my door or come into my house at 3 a.m. without knocking. Because they're slaves on a plantation and they don't want to make master mad. So, that's part of our self-identity that needs, we need a near-death experience. To accept that we're actually slaves. We ain't running around the world spreading freedom and democracy and liberating the Iraqi people. And all the rest of the lies we tell ourselves. We need to come to some, uh, come to the grips with the truth about who we are, individually and collectively. And in order to do that, our whole self-image and worldview needs to be broken down. Only then can it be rebuilt back up from the ground up. So, that's where I came from. I've already been through a process that you guys are all now going to have to go through. You're going through it, and I said you would be going through this. And that everyone's getting a chance to show their true colors. Eight months before COVID was even heard of in December of 2019. And then it took another year for them to roll out the vax, but right as they introduced COVID, everyone's like, this is leading to a vax, this is leading to a vax, that's what this is all about, leading up to a vax. And all the people around us were like, shut up, it's just a disease, wear your mask and shut up, they're not even going to go to a vaccine. Doug, my stepdad, before they rolled out the vax, I was the one saying this is leading to a vax, that's what this is all about. I'd go take one right now if there was one available, just because I don't want to get sick. That was his words. By the time it actually came out, I guess he reconsidered. So through this process, we're all being extracted from those groups of friends and families and religions, citizens of our country, even members of humanity. And when I first told, made that heartfelt, tear-drenched prayer to Jesus Christ, I was ashamed to be a human. That was before I found the implant or knew about plasma fire or anything else. I opened up the hailing frequencies. FC Kahuna, hailing. The song, the music video will be linked in the description. I opened up the hailing frequencies when I, na- when I made that tear-drenched, heartfelt prayer to Jesus Christ. What do I mean by hailing frequencies? Well, that's how my self-image has changed according to my, in accordance with the changes in my worldview. I am now a biobot transceiver with an open frequency channel. Like on Star Trek when they'd say, open the hailing frequencies. And something like a Skype video phone would pop up on the wall and Captain Kirk could talk to the captain of the other ship in a video phone call where you could see them on the screen as well as hear them when they would open the hailing frequencies. But you got to let down the shields in order to open the hailing frequencies. And that creates a vulnerability, right? That was all on Star Trek. When I let down my shields and opened the hailing frequencies to Jesus Christ and asked for a Nineveh reprieve that we all might not be held accountable for the things that have been done in our name by our country using our taxpayer dollar because I saw that we had sent genetically modified Syrian moderate opposition forces by definition. You know, the guys that John McCain went over there and said, these are the good guys, they're the moderates, they're not terrorists, they're the moderate rebels. And we're going to use them and fund them and arm them and train them to go take down Assad, the president of Syria. These are good guys, I've met them myself. Along with those guys were some genetically modified terrorists. 
and the ambassador to the United Nations from the country of Syria. That's what I am. I'm an ambassador. And that's why I say some people have come to know me to represent God. I represent God to some people. What do you think you're God? No, I think I represent. Just like the guy that went out on the United Nations floor, he's not all the people of Syria. He is a representative of. Hold on. Sorry, I just had some normies walking by. God, here comes more. My point was, I got to the point where I was ashamed to be a human being when I saw that the ambassador of Syria to the United Nations went out on the floor of the UN twice and said that we had sent GMO soldiers into his country and that those that have been captured alive will be sent back to where they came from. And I was ashamed of what we've become and the things that we have done as humanity, as human beings, and as Americans. And we have hell to pay. And I ask that we might receive a Nineveh reprieve that we won't have to be held accountable for and pay the price for the things that have been done in our name by our countrymen. And that we might know the truths of the Bible and the lies of the Bible. <laughs> and through COVID, are you still proud to be an American? Are we what you thought we were? They all folded like a cheap suit under a little bit of peer pressure and a little bit of the authority said it's a mandate. And we think we're the freedom loving, flag waving, gun toting, God fearing guys that are spreading freedom and democracy around the world. <laughs> we were showed that we're the biggest slaves of all and we fear our own master more than anyone around the world. So at the time, I was ashamed to be a human being, and I hope by now a lot of people are ashamed to be an American. And realize those people in that compact that you thought you had, your allegiances, the tie that binds, is common beliefs, common principles, and common experiences. And when you realize you don't have any beliefs or principles in common with these people and over the last few years our experience our experiences have been very different as demonstrated on my video titled viva la resistance where i'm ranting and raving and standing my ground and not letting them put a fucking laser to my forehead how many other americans have done that not very many or this wouldn't have lasted very long most of them 90 however many percent of them didn't do anything like that. 90 something percent of them wore a mask. I don't know what percent took a vax. 99.9999999 percent of them didn't do anything like what I did. Put up any sort of resistance at all. Freedom. So, hopefully a lot of people through this process know that Americans aren't what we pretend we are. And eventually that'll work its way right down to your family members. The relationship you thought you had with them isn't what it, you thought it was because they aren't who you think they are. They're a fraction of a relationship to someone else. Their whole identity, their whole persona, their self-image is based on their relationships with other people. So it's a, a bunch of fractions of personal self-identities or relationships. I'm sorry, I got that kind of mixed up. But I think you get the point. And only once you let go of all those relationships with all those other people can you actually develop your own true, personal, sovereign self-identity. You've got to lose yourself in order to find yourself. You have to lose your self-image that is just a conglomeration of all these relationships and all these proximities to other people and groups in order to find a true self-identity, a relationship with yourself. And I got there because I was kind of thrown into the fire, baptized by fire. I was born again. After my ego death, after my whole self-image and worldview dissolved right before my eyes, that night that I prayed to Jesus Christ is the night that I found the implant. And from that day forward, my whole world dissolved along with my self-image. My worldview and my self-image dissolved, disintegrated. All the pieces became disconnected. And then break me down, build me back up and do whatever it takes. You break me down, you build me up, believer. I'm a believer. And now that I'm initiated in the way that I am, I don't 
don't have much interest in talking to all these people. It doesn't matter if they once called themselves my family or my friends. In fact, all of humanity can go eat shit. <laughs> Hold on, I got another normie coming my way. <laughs> they, re they resemble that remark. And they still have a personal attachment to those humans, and they think that they're good people. Here in America, the principles that this country was founded upon is the tie that binds. And we all stand for this and believe in that until the rubber hits the road. And then you find out what your real colors are and that you're nothing like what you pretended to be. And your allegiance to your neighbors, people these days will watch their neighbors get drug off in a white van like the Stasi police or the Gestapo. And in those countries, in those times of Nazi Germany and Stalin's Russia, people would close the drapes when they saw one of those white vans show up to take their neighbors away. They would close the drapes because they don't want no trouble. That guy must have done something wrong or they wouldn't be here to take him away. So, all those good Americans are getting shown what they really are. And all those human beings are gonna get shown what they really are. And if you can lose all your preconceived ideas of who you thought you were and be like unto a child, curious about everything and certain about nothing, once you've been through a process like what I've been, I am interested in associating with and interacting with beings of consciousness that is compatible with my own. And I don't see many human beings that are very compatible with me. Because my consciousness has reached a level, a quality, a state of being and a state of mind that I don't find myself compatible for relationships with any of these beings that call themselves human. I need a relationship with a being that has a consciousness like mine to where we could have common beliefs, principles, priorities, and practices, standards of behavior. That way we could both participate in some of the same activities and enjoy each other's company. Because I can no longer do it with any of these humans. So, once you've reached a level of consciousness where you're more interested in principles over personalities, substance over style, function over form, and ideals over idols, your God no longer needs to be a human form. Your idol isn't having to be a blonde-haired, blonde blue-eyed baby Jesus. You recognize consciousness is much more important. And that's where principles comes from. So it doesn't matter the personality characteristics. Ideals come from a state of mind, not a physical form. So I am now only really compatible with other people who have a like consciousness as mine. Only those type of people would I be interested in even having a conversation with, or a friendship with, or a working relationship, or a romantic or more intimate relationship. Or a relationship, the likes of which people talk about having with Heavenly Father. That Heavenly Father ain't got to be in a human suit. And I'm to the point, I was ready to leave this world a long time ago. But God picked me up and dusted me off and said, no, 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 don't do it that way. Here, let's do this other thing. I got a job for you now that you're ready and willing to leave this world. I got a job for you. And at the end of it, we can leave this world together. At the time, I didn't know that's what the job was. <laughs> but that appears to be the case. I've accepted my role in what's going on here. And so this is gonna end up being part two of a two-part series. Part one is just 20 minutes that Suspicious Observer put out today that has many parallels and overlaps with the songs that I've been showing you, particularly from AWOL Nation. We're leaving all the haters behind before the sun decides to hide. J-Dreamers used that word the other day in a video that I made about the sun hiding. Suspicious observers use, sus, suspicious observer use those very same words, that the sun will be hiding. Except he shows you this whole same idea as the plasma apocalypse, except in very scientific terms. 
One, two, three, do you love me? Watch me scream, burning on the trees in amazement. Because I'm on fire. That's called Soul Wars by AWOL Nation. Burn it down, baby, burn it, burn it down. Burn it down, baby, burn it, burn it down. That's Burn It Down by AWOL Nation. This kid ain't all right. Says, catch fire with me. Uh, Trouble's coming for the free man. So stand up and catch fire with me. Or you can follow them to hell. I can name quite a few AWOL Nation songs that proves he's singing about this same thing we're going through now. That was the reason for the CEO exodus. The cycle reset is another terminology that Suspicious Observer uses in the 20 minute video that he put out today. We are in the great reset. I used that word when I was sitting in the driveway of KC Kid in Missouri, eight months before anyone even heard of COVID. I was explaining to you what you're gonna need to do to make it through this reset. I use those very words. So I accept my role in what's going on here and the changes in the world. I have changed my self-image accordingly to the changes in my worldview. Most people aren't willing to accept what's going on in the world because they're clinging to their old ideas, their old ways, their old self-image, their old worldview, and they won't let their ego die. So they need that ego death, that near-death experience, also known as the dark night of the soul. That is part of a collective initiation we're going through. And all those initiation rituals have a break you down process before they build you back up. Another word that uh, Suspicious Observer used when he referenced the supplies that are becoming scarce, but that you can still get certain supplies right now while the supply lines and supplies chains are still somewhat functional. So don't delay, act now, supplies are running out. Allow if you're still alive, six to eight years to arrive. And if you follow, there may be a tomorrow. But if the offer's shunned, you might as well be walking on the sun. The whole thing Suspicious Observers is talking and telling you about is the giant solar flash that's going to happen. That's what I said on my way to Missouri is going to happen. And either you can watch it from down here at ground level, or you can watch it up there. Suspicious Observer says there's going to be about an 8 or 10 year period. 6 to 8 years to arrive. But during that 6 to 8 years, you're not just floating above the earth. You go to some other places. There's options. You can enter into another consciousness farm that's just prior to their extraction process and be someone who's initiated that can help, just like the people that I ran into along the way on my trip to Missouri, who knew what I was doing and why I was there more so than I did. From the police to cue ball and ATM, Adam Thomas McLean and Becca, to the lady on the bus stop or the park bench at about 2 a.m. that said, it sounds like you're performing your ministry. When I told her the whole, as quickly as I could in a three, five minute synopsis, how I got there, I said, yeah, it does kind of sound like that, but I've never been a ministry kind of guy to listen to someone else's, much less perform my own. The guy at the warehouse, when I followed the spirit in there and he said, what are you looking for? Uh, I said some shit about love and acceptance or something. He said, no, we ain't got none of that here. You came to the wrong place. So I tuned back into the spirit and I said, I'm looking for the truth about myself without fear of what it is I might discover. And he smiled and said, oh, you're doing great then. Just keep doing what you're doing. The locksmith. Then I chased down. I saw the logo on the back of his car. The spirit led me from one car to another, to another, to another, and then said that one. And he pulled into a parking lot. Spirit said, go talk to him. I didn't know what I was going to say when I walked up, but I saw on the back of the locksmith van that he was driving, it said, we're the people you can trust with the keys to your home. I said, hey, I hear you're the people I can trust with the keys to my home. He said, yeah, that's right. I said, well, I joined God's army recently. I'm just kind of out getting my marching orders. He said, oh yeah, God's army did something for a friend of mine once. Uh, maybe we'll go, how about we go inside here and see if we can get you the parts you need? I said, okay. He said, okay. Takes another drag off his cigarette and puts it out. Says, you ready? I said, yeah. And we walked in. It turns out I needed a blower fitting for my fire breathing dragon effect.
the overweight guy with stains on his shirt and missing teeth in the parking lot that had his car loaded with everything he owned. And when I was filming, this is in a video titled, Who Made Who? It's the video where when I got back in the car, I started filming again and it was upside down because I started the video like this, filming the stuff on the ground. Dragons here, dragons there, dragons everywhere. And I see the car next to mine loaded. I said, this guy's on the same journey. And then he came out of the restaurant. He said, hey, uh, he was real timid. He wasn't like, what the fuck are you doing filming my car? He was real timid, like, hey, I heard, I heard you were taking pictures of my car. I said, yeah, it looks like you're on the same journey I am, brother. Look at my car. It's loaded with everything I own, ass to the ground. I said, where are you going? Uh, uh, he looks up, he quivers, his voice starts to quiver, and he starts looking up at the sky like he's been seeing the dragons too. He's like, oh, uh, oh, uh. I say, yep, you're on the same journey I am, brother. He's like, well, where are you going? You got a destination yet? I said, nope, but I'm going. Closest thing I could tell him at the time is that I was going somewhere near the Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri borderline. I didn't tell him this part, I don't think, but the reason I was going there was for the underground facilities that I've delivered food to. Underground food storage, cold storage facilities. So these are all the people that I met along the way that you can be an insert into someone else's world, like a backstage hand on the Truman Show, who gives people that are going through this process of extraction just enough interaction to keep them on the path and stable and knowing that they're not crazy. Or you can help kickstart this culture because, you see, Suspicious Observer is under the impression that people make it through each one of these resets. He said, we're descendants from people that made it through the last reset, and they were descendants from others that made it before the last reset. But what he's not taking into account is that some people get lifted up, the solar flash happens, and then they get sat back down. Like in the movie 2012, right before it all goes down, they take off in something like Noah's Ark. Those ships you're seeing in the sky, those spheres that you're seeing in the sky, the cosmic egg timer is up. And so uh, I've got an underground facility. I've shown you guys up Spanish Fort Canyon. It's even got ventilation shaft running down it, the five horsepower electric uh, motor component on the wall. But that's for after, along with all the supplies. Because if the offer is shunned, then you might as well be walking on the sun. And Suspicious Observers talks about the induction that even underground facilities are not going to fare very well because the electric current that goes through the ground, the induction, magnetic resonance induction, I think it's called, is stronger in the ground than above. So I've accepted my role that I play here as an ambassador. And that part two of the ambassadorship is coming real soon when you can actually see these beings that I've been trying to introduce you to that up until the near future have been invisible and all in my mind. <clears throat> Pretending the weather's all in your mind and you got no one to blame. That's uh, Ed Sheeran. You cannot stop the rain. Like I said on my way to Missouri when I kept singing the song, Sail, this is how I show my love. This is how an angel cries. I told you there's a storm coming real soon and you don't want to be here when the teardrops start to fall. So you can either come with us. Come on, baby, take a chance with us and meet me on the back of the blue bus. This world is the blue bus and we're at the very tail end of it right now. Or it hurts to set you free, but you'll never follow me. Those survivors that made it through each reset weren't just people that survived based on their Boy Scout skills and some preservations, preparations they set aside, or, like I said in a recent video, we would have devolved to caveman. And the perpetuation of the behaviors would be that the guys that's willing to rape, rob, and murder, and pillage the most wins in a survival of the fittest dog-eat-dog-killer-be-killed mentality those are the guys that end up passing along their genes and their behavior patterns and traits to the next generation 
we're not there. So that proves there's an intervention that keeps our consciousness growing and raising. Because after a reset, the survivors, if they were to survive on their own, would devolve into such a level of mentality and behavior that it wouldn't even be worth living in. It would be Lord of the Flies. And the killing and the raping and the robbing and the murdering and the pillaging would be the skill set that rules the day and determines whose kids are going to go on into the future. The fact that our consciousness, evolutionary psychology, as I talked about, we're in the middle of a social engineering program that grabs certain people's consciousness. Now, Suspicious Observers talked today about all the deep underground military bases. He showed you all the celebrities they're building underground bunkers. And said that if you can't, those are just the ones that are known of, he says. And just the ones that are known of have facilities and space for millions of people. Like more people than there are billionaires who have invested in these underground facilities. Like they need to grab some regular Joe Blow people to kickstart the next society. That they're going to lift up, let the solar flash go by, and then set back down. Average people, not just billionaires and millionaires. Average people, ordinary people that have demonstrated extraordinary characteristics and behaviors that would make a better world worth living in because they demonstrate that they have become people that are worth living with and that they would create a world full of people who are worth living with because that's the only way you live in a world that is worth living in as if it's filled with people that are worth living with. Those are the people they would choose to lift and set back down. Salvation. To be salvaged is based upon your characteristics, your behavior patterns. And having demonstrated what you would do with the power and authority that you do have. All of you have power and authority. To one degree or another, have you made the world a better place with it? And how? My story goes clear back to Sonia Sorensen, FBI Cyber Squad Division. Paula Houston, Pornography and Obscenity States Ombudsman when I was like 20. And I went to Baca, Bikers Against Child Abuse, when I could see that there were still frames of children being slipped into sandals, commercial sandals, the all-inclusive vacation resort, where we, tailor, we, we cater to the most exquisite of tastes. And they're putting single frames of kids coming down water slides spread eagle in between the scenes where there's a light flash. In between the scene over here on the beach and the scene over here in the restaurant, there's a light flash that gets brighter and brighter and brighter and then dims out and goes to the next scene. And right at the brightest point is where they insert a single still frame. So when you're given the ammunition, will you send it down range to do the right thing to make the world a better place? And use the power and authority that you do have? Fuck yeah, I will. I went to the Attorney General's office at the State Capitol Building, which is where Paula Houston, Pornography and Obscenity State's Ombudsman, had her office. At the time, she was known as the Porn Czar. I went to the FBI, Cyber Squad Division, Sonia Sorensen. I went to the bikers with the black leather jackets who thought they were something badass. And they ain't shit. They were more interested in having more meetings with the Attorney General. Oh, well, I, I have meetings with the Attorney General, but if I take it, if I go to him with this, it'll be my last. He was more interested in maintaining his good standing membership status within these groups. His self-identity was based on these relationships and proximities to other people. And I got to maintain my self-image. I got to maintain my identity as a guy who gets to meet with the Attorney General. And if I actually take this ammo and send it down range... I'm afraid it won't hit the target, or if it does, then I might even really be in trouble. So the people that are making it through this filtration process, like I said, was coming, that you will be put into a Petri dish, a culture of consciousness that is the likes of which you yourself have demonstrated yourself to be. When I said, be the change in the world that you wish to see, that's not some utopian ideal. That's an ultimatum. That's what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself in a world full of people just like yourself. Hold on, I got more normies. So bottom line is, those who have demonstrated that they are willing and able and have demonstrated a pattern 
of examples of proof through their own behavior that they are going to be the change they wish to see in the world. Even though I had no guarantees it would have any effect, I could see the long-term social re recourse, whether it's the unsustainable lifestyle we've engaged in as war as a lifestyle, sending GMO soldiers to Syria, or other ways in which, even just in my own family, where the ripple that you make and the effect that you have on other people creates a better world, like pay it forward. The ideals in the world of, in the movie, pay it forward. Instead of wait for someone else to do something good for you and then pay it back, why don't we start paying it forward and making those ripples go out in the world and then it will circle its way back around to you when you've created happiness and good experiences for others who will then affect others, who will then affect others, who will then affect others, and it'll eventually come back to you. Because you live in that same world as all those people. And I could see the long-term social implications of your own personal behavior and how it makes the world a better place or a worse place. And even only to a very slight degree because we're convinced that there's 7 billion people in the world and that my own personal behavior isn't going to work its way through those 7 billion. Maybe if I lived in a town of 7 people, then that ideal you're talking about would be worth practicing. Even though I knew we live in a big enough world that the ripples that I create probably ain't going to come back to me directly, it was still worth doing to whatever extent I could. And it is those people that have demonstrated that they will make this a world worth living in by becoming a person worth living with. That are coming with. And we're leaving all the haters behind before the sun decides to hide. So, I've accepted my ambassadorship, I've accepted the role that I play, and these experiences that we're having in the world, while so many others are in denial, like the song 10010110, or you can become one with the smoke, in denial, in denial, in denial, in denial, I'm not in denial that I've received information embedded within this music. Once you no longer are either and you can see it, it's like, holy shit, this is real and it's going down. Yeah. So that might be another one of the opportunities on the other side of the reset is to make music and embed these jewels of knowledge for future generations. Or like I said, you can go insert yourself into the next consciousness and the next Petri dish over under the next dome right over there. Or the other dome that's right over there that thinks they're in a solar system spinning in outer space or whatever. <clears throat> I'm not saying we're not. But let's just say this planet's a lot... Let's, I'm not saying this is the case. But imagine this planet's a lot bigger than they tell us it is. So the surface seems flat from any point on the globe. Because right now, if it's a globe, you should be able to measure the curve. But if it was a much bigger globe, that curve would be so slight that it might be imperceivable or immeasurable if it's a large enough globe. And imagine there's domes, firmaments, all over this thing. You can go over to the next dome. Insert yourself as a character to interact with others who don't really know what they're going through. And you could help them through the process. And just like immediately after you graduated high school, you're more uh, compatible, like 21 Jump Street, to go back in as an undercover narc because you still look and act and talk and walk and relate to high schoolers because you're only 21 years old, but you graduated two or three years ago. Likewise, it's not either or, it's both and. You can accept many of these options. There's many options and opportunities on the other side of the reset. Make music kickstart the culture that's going to be restarted here, insert yourself into another culture that's going through their extraction process and awakening process, about to go through their great reset. And it would be more effective to have people that have just barely gone through their first reset to go and be one of these undercover agents in the next dome over because you're still able to relate to what it was that you just went through in order to interact with others that are now going through that. Once you're elevated, your consciousness has been elevated for long enough, like you're 30, 45 years old, you can no longer relate to teenagers. So that's just one of the many options and opportunities that'll be had. 
But I've accepted my role in this, like in the movie or the series. I haven't seen the series. I haven't read the book. All I've seen is little clippets and snippets that other truthers have made about this TV series called Childhood's End. Where they used a regular, average, blue-collar, working-class guy as a, an ambassador, a spokesperson, an interim, an interlocutor, a guy to go between, speak to the gods on behalf of humanity, speak to humanity on behalf of gods, and finally it came to the point where he said, look, you guys just need to show yourselves. People are starting to assume the worst. Just show yourselves and quit with all the secrecy and, and hiding behind up, floating up there in our skies. Just come down. Everyone knows you're there. <clears throat> We're getting to that point. MB3 is showing you more and more on a gradual incremental increase. But that increase, I've been watching them a few years. That increase over the last few months has accelerated. And it will continue to accelerate. Because we are approaching the end point. The plasma fire that I've shown you is the proof of what suspicious observer is telling you from the analytical standpoint with all the data and the science behind it. I show you the practical real world application when I go and show you, look, shit's burning from the inside. Look, these tree, these buildings are burning down to the ground and leaving the trees standing around them. Look, the engine blocks and the rims and the glass and the car door handles are all melting. I'm showing you the plasma fire happening in real time while he's giving you the bigger story of what's going to go on during these resets. I'm showing you what time it is as it relates to this bigger story that he's giving you the bigger picture of. I'm giving you the, the microcosm of the local here and now effect that shows where on that timeline we are. And so when he says 2030s and 2040s, I don't think so, pal. We wouldn't be seeing the increase of plasma fire at the rate that we have, nor the increase of these sightings in the sky at the rate that we have, if it was still another 10 or 15 or 20 years away. I never saw a live plasma fire until the summer of 2021. I've been doing this since the summer of 2018. I found my implant April 19th, 2018. I went to Missouri April 19th, 2019. I started filming Plasma Fire in that summer of 2018. So we had the whole summer of 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and now 2022. But for the first three years, I never saw a Plasma Fire. And I was driving truck pretty much the whole time. Well, I was driving Uber for a couple years. Still, right here, just working at a local job as I am now, I've seen two or three live plasma fires this year. The one across the street at the fishing game, the one up the road. My point is, that timeline isn't 20, 20, 2030s or 2040s. His last video was titled, When It's Time, It's Time. And you can see that it's time. And... Him putting out these ideas about the 2030s and 2040s is just to maintain some sort of uh, calm in order to not incite panic for those that are capable of making preparations. And those preparations are all good for the people that come back and get sat down after being lifted up during that solar flash. Because those that are here at ground level during the solar flash, if the offer is shunned, then you might as well be walking on the sun. Someone said in the comment section, uh, look forward to meeting you guys on the other side of this. They seem to think that they might be someone who's being processed through. There are those who are being processed through. I know it still seems surreal. It still seems surreal for me, like a dream. But real soon, the reality is going to kick in. And to that I say, the song, Children of the Sun, People of the Earth, Can You Hear Me? Came a voice from the sky on that magical night. Everyone stood waiting. Watching as the ships landed one by one. I'm missing a lyric in there. And then 
on the journey of a thousand lifetimes with the children of the sun with the children of the sun they started to climb children of the what the sun the sun tunnel is one of the truths that I've been telling when I said I guess I should tell my story before I go and I still never got around to making that video because I've been given so many other truths to deliver as the messenger that I am I still have that right there and I told you there would come there's a justice system on its way because right now in the justice system that we're in no way I'd see I'd get any kind of justice out of this even though I know there's three other people with these implants in the same spot and I've shown you Denzel Washington getting one in the same spot in the movie called uh, Virtuosity I think <clears throat> So my life has been guided starting over 20 years ago when I watched Awakening to Zero Point and Beyond Zero Point, the collective initiation that told me and showed me all about the pole shift. And 20 some odd years later, that information came flooding back into me because it's now relevant, useful and applicable and practical. And we are in that collective initiation. And so many people are unwilling to relinquish their self-identity their self-image and their worldview and let go of all the things they thought they knew. They won't let their ego die, so they will have to physically die. The only ones who, I've said a bunch of times, you don't get on board thinking you know something. So those that cling to the things that they think they know are going down with the ship. So I have developed a love for these beings of consciousness, regardless of what shape their body happens to take. Over the last four and a half years of my life, I've developed a true love and a uh, compassion, a uh, affection for these beings of consciousness who have led me through this process. When I open the hailing frequency, sure, tell yourself it's coming through the microchip. If it helps you understand and comprehend that this is real, then tell yourself it's coming through the microchip in order to allow yourself to understand that this is real and that I've been receiving these messages and this these messages are correlating with our world experience. Because to deny that that's real and to deny that that's true, pretending that the weather's all in your mind, you got no one to blame. That's just the way I feel. You cannot stop the rain, no way. Holding an umbrella when the great clouds come over again. That's by Ed Sheeran. Might I reference the other two songs? I see fire inside of mountains. I see fire hollowing trees. And I see fire hollowing souls. That's what it is. I see fires inside of mountains. I see fire burning the trees. I see fire hollowing souls. And the other song, Make It Rain. I know there can't come fire from the sky to refine the purest of kings. And even though I know this fire comes with pain, even so and just the same, make it rain. And even though I know this uh, fire comes with tears and that these tears come with pain, they may as well all be in vain. So even so and just the same, make it rain. That fire from the sky that refines the purest of kings is what we're happening, what we're seeing right here and now going on all around us. That fire that hollows souls. Ed Sheeran's one of the artists. AWOL Nation's one of the artists. There's a good chance I'll be one of the artists on the other side of this reset. Because as someone who knows what the experience was like to receive these... Hold on, I got a dog over here. As someone who knows what the experience was like on this end of receiving and extracting those messages from within the music, it would be appropriate that on the other end, I am one of the people inserting those messages into the music of what is to come. But like in that song, fuck all the perfect people, Jesus said that long ago. It says, I need everyone. I need uh, herb dealers and uh, I need undertakers and such. I need, and it names off all the different roles that play 
Don't play up to the lens, my friends. Just give me what you know. And I will see you in the last video. On the other side of this, like Suspicious Observer said, they have room for millions and millions of people. There's only a couple few thousand of these billionaires and millionaires. So that means they're going to be selecting a lot of regular average blue collar people. What would they select them based upon? Not your money, not your wealth, not your status within society. Your demonstration of your virtues of character that would make a world worth living in and create people that are worth living with. And if you've done that for your whole life, there's a good chance you've got a, a spot on the other side of this and you'll receive one of those offers. But if the offer is shunned, then you might as well be walking on the sun. James True, in his most recent video, talking about the end of the fifth sun, says that they don't want to have to start over with knuckle-dragging troglodyte cavemen of a consciousness. And so his idea is that they create a genetic arc, a chimera, with, like Noah's Ark, had all the seeds of everything on earth, two by two, instead, like the genetic seed vault, that they already have, you know, in Antarctica or whatever. But that doesn't preserve the consciousness the way taking a few beings of consciousness who have demonstrated and exhibited characteristics and behavior patterns, the likes of which we want to perpetuate into the future and let them be the seeds to put into a new culture. And just like cheese, you don't need quantity. All you need is the right quality of that culture of cheese to enter into your new ingredients and the whole batch of cheese becomes that flavor. Or yogurt, same thing. It's the culture of yeast and the other bacterias or whatever there is in that yogurt that make it taste the way it does. Or that cheese. <clears throat> and to make a new batch of cheese, you get all your ingredients together and then you take a little tiny bit of another chunk of cheese that you'd like to replicate and reproduce and you drop it in your ingredients in the new petri dish, in the new consciousness farm. And what multiplies is based on the seeds that uh, the culture was seeded with. And it cultivates that consciousness and the whole petri dish becomes a society like those few uh, remnants. That's what they call them, the elect, the remnant. That's what's being salvaged here, is consciousness, not just genetics. Have I mentioned the CEO Exodus lately? Like that $6 billion, that guy that was uh, working for a six or $60 billion corporation and just quit his job, said, I'm gonna go sit on the beach and do nothing. Like all the other CEOs that just quit their job and disappeared off the radar. They didn't pop up at any other large corporations in a similar position as an executive of one of these massive multi-billion dollar corporations. They just disappeared. Young CEOs, like 30 years old with their whole future ahead of them, quit that job and didn't take up a similar position in a similar sized corporation. Where'd they all go? This ain't all in my head. This is all happening. But I started foretelling this before anyone had even heard of COVID. So with all these pieces put together, my life is what it is. I know it seems surreal. It seems like a dream. It seems like a delusion. It seems like a story. Till you look around you and realize, holy fuck, this guy's the real deal. So if you need to, tell yourself it's coming through the microchip and it's the deep state giving me this intel having me do the job that I'm doing. In order for you to accept that it's real and that it's happening, and that goes a long way for you to accept that it's real and it's happening. Okay, maybe it's the microchip and 5G and he's getting some of that V2K voice to skull technology. Tell yourself whatever you got to in order to accept that it's real. Because this shit is happening all around us. And I've been calling the shots and foretelling the story since before COVID ever happened. 
telling you how to make it through this reset. And I'm going to do my best to keep telling you whatever, uh, whatever is relayed to me. But it's happening. And it's happening soon. It ain't the 2030s, I'll tell you that. No more gravity. Nothing holding them down. Flying endlessly as their ships leave the ground. That's Children of the Sun. And after the gold rush, where I was lying in a burnt out basement when the sun burst through the sky. And I was thinking of something Jeff Snyder once said, and I was hoping it was a lie. Oh yeah, speaking of, that's another lyric in the song. This kid ain't alright. That I'm afraid I might be right. Anyway, I was lying in a burnt out basement when the sun burst through the sky. And I was thinking of something a friend once said, and I was hoping it was a lie. And I was hoping for a replacement. Anyway, it talks about the loading had begun when the, I saw the silver spaceships and the loading had begun and they were taking Mother Nature's silver seed to a new home in the sun. These messages embedded within this music add up any one of them, you could say, well, that means nothing. You add all of them together, and if you can still say it means nothing, there is something wrong with you. And the fact that all this music had all these messages embedded within it, long before Jeff Snyder ever came on the scene, means that they have planned and prepared for this for a very long time. So don't worry about provisions and beans and bandages and bullets and underground bunkers. They know how to process us through this. They have prepared this so sophisticatedly as to leave these messages in the music. You don't think they got beans, bullets, and bandages covered? They got it. <laughs>